something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Where did you hear this? And you believe everything you hear? <laughs> Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers, but some of them are, are what we call bards. Bards are minstrels and more, spies as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Nobles, mostly. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite, and in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems, but it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. The excitement of the life wears off very quickly, I'm afraid. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry, and when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the maker brought me here. What say you? By all means. My adventures? <laughs> I'm hardly an old man just returned from across the ocean, am I? Should I shake my fist at nearby children while I talk about the good old days? No, I didn't say that. Old men love to talk, after all. Will I get a kiss afterwards? Oh, now the anticipation is going to kill me. Thank you very much for that. Let's see, my second mission ever for the crows was a bit intriguing. I was sent to kill a mage who had been meddling in politics. How should I know? I got the impression it involved sex, but then I get that impression about most everything. Odd, really. As it turned out, the mage in question was quite a delightful young woman. Long, divine legs, as I recall. I caught her in a carriage on her way to escape to the provinces. After I killed her guard, she got down on her hands and knees and begged for her life. Rather aptly, I might add. So I joined her in the carriage for the night and left the next morning. Well, yes, twice, actually. Then she decided to try and use me instead. The woman had actually convinced me to speak to the crows on her behalf. What can I say? I was young and foolish at the time. Then, as I was kissing her goodbye to return to Antiva City, she slipped on the threshold and fell backwards out of the carriage. Broke her neck. Shame, really, but at least it happened quickly. Not actually, no. I was a bit unimpressed by the development at first. Then I found out that she had told the driver to take her to Janellen instead. She had planned to lose me in the provinces. I would have looked very foolish to the crows. As it was, my master was very impressed that I had done such a fine job of making it look like an accident. The circle of magi was unaware of foul play, and everyone was happier all around. I got stupid, in fact, and very lucky. It was after that when I learned that one needn't let a pretty face go to your head. Professionalism was key. That's my moral of the day, you see. And one that not everyone learns, I'm sad to say. But that's enough tale spinning from me for the moment. Talking about the mage has made me a bit nostalgic, I'm afraid. Ah, the good old days. Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Ah, yes, Connor, of course. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. Every mage is vulnerable, no matter how accomplished or powerful. That is the first thing we learn, and overconfidence can lead to recklessness. One slip... All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone, replaced by madness. And there is no turning back, or at least that's what they say. Of late, I have begun to wonder if, if there is any way an abomination can be cured, or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity, their humanity. Yes. 
It is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. I lied to you, you know, about why I left Orle. I didn't feel like talking about it then, what happened to me. Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. I was framed, betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a high-born lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. She was a remarkable woman. I cannot fully express the admiration I had for her or the depth of my affection. I thought I knew her. My devotion to her blinded me to her less than noble attributes. You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body, sealed documents. My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries, Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orle. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life as Bard taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries, it takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents, altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. The Orlesian guards, they captured me, did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured, and at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. What is your wish, Kadan? Speak, then. Ours wear the faces of men. Darkspawn, abominations, plagues, and storms. Men are far more dangerous than these. One moment of betrayal can bring more ruin than an earthquake. You know this. They are Talvashoth. They say they are Grey Ones. True in the knowledge of themselves. They are gaping holes where men used to be. Nothing can fill them. I don't know. There was a village in the mountains of Saharon. Farmers. They grew cinnamon and nutmeg trees in perfectly ordered rows. There would always be one person waiting. A foreman, a harvester, rank didn't matter. Often they would say nothing. Simply watch as we worked to examine the empty house. A new one each time. That had once been the home of a colleague. A friend. We always made a point of searching. Now and then a body would turn up in a river eaten by rain and crows. More often we found nothing. Even in the worst parts of the jungle the villagers would send someone with us to see the tiniest piece of bone or cloth. Anything contained the possibility of their lost friend. Must we speak of this? We could be fighting something. Very well. Isn't it the nature of a wound to bleed? 
I have no more answers than you. Why do we fight the Darkspawn? Why do the Darkspawn fight us? Now and then. Do the reasons matter? It makes little difference to those they fight. Tell me then, why do you fight? In the Antarm we are told of the enemy. Assume he loves as you love, hates as you hate, and fights just as hard as you. It's a lie, of course. But does that matter, so long as you stand and believe you know your enemy? The Talvashoth wish us dead, and we wish to go on living. The point of our war is war. Very well. Undoubtedly, they've used it to kill countless people. No, but they don't care what I think. I have no feelings you can hurt, Warden. As you wish. Thank you. I, I didn't expect the band's men to notice my escape so quickly. I tried to hide here in the woods, but there wasn't time. And now I'm a dead man. You were there in Ostago. You know how things went. For me, it was either this, or die in some dark spawn's belly, or, or be hung as a deserter. You were there with the Grey Wardens, one of Duncan's new recruits. I was to guard the King. He was my friend, understand? Maker. All that time in Ban Loren's prison. And I couldn't stop thinking about all they suffered that one dark night at Ostagar. No, perhaps not. But I've been given the chance to set things right. If it's the likes of you who sees me to my final hour, perhaps things happen for a reason. The King entrusted me with the key to the Royal Arms chest. If anything were to happen to him, he said, it was vital I deliver it to the Wardens. The Maker has a sense of humor, doesn't he? I suppose it's for the best, however. Had I kept it, it would be in Ban Loren's hands by now. But you said Kaelin entrusted it to you. I was afraid. I thought I would lose it on the battlefield, so I stashed it in the camp. Please, it's probably still there. I hope not. Would they know how to work the lock even if they did? The Darkspawn are more cunning than we give them credit for. But the King trusted that lock with his secrets. I'd guess that the contents of that chest are still intact. The key's behind a loose stone at the base of a statue. I'll draw a map for you, so you'll know where to search. You'll be taking me along, won't you? Call me sentimental, but I left behind some Darkspawn that really deserve a sword through the middle. The events at Ostagar still haunt my thoughts, Warden. And no doubt Alistair's as well. If that is where we are headed, I think it best that we accompany you. It is vital that the King's documents do not fall into the wrong hands. As for Marek's sword, it is too powerful to be poured at by those monsters. Same for the King's other arms and armor. And... And if you happen to find Caelan's body, see it off. He was our King. He shouldn't be left to rot amidst the Darkspawn's filth.
Alistair, are you all right? Oh, they left him here to rot. We need to do something. He was a good man, who hoped too much, and died too young. He deserves what little honor we can afford to grant him. I was... I thought it was all over. I... I will explain everything when we are back at camp. Now is not the time. I think I owe you an explanation for what happened earlier. You should know that something happened to me at the tower before you came along. You spoke to Petra, did you not? She told you I saved her from a demon. I did, but I did not survive that encounter. Let me explain fully. I engaged a very powerful demon to rescue Petra. It sapped me of all my energy and will and left me drained. It took everything I had to defeat it. And when I was done, I no longer had the strength to keep my heart beating. I remember my life ebbing away. Everything receded from me. Sound, light, I remember being enveloped in complete, impenetrable darkness. And then I sensed a presence enfolding me and cradling me, whispering quietly to me. The sensation is impossible to describe. I was being held back firmly, but gently, as a mother would a child eager to slip from her grasp. I felt life and warmth flowing through my veins again. I began to be aware of small sounds and the discomfort of my hip pressing into the cold stone of the tower floor. The Fade contains spirits both benevolent and malicious. The benevolent spirits seldom make themselves known, because they want nothing from mortals, unlike the demons. It was one of these spirits that saved me. Without it, I would be dead. And it has not left me. It is with me, even now bonded to me. You see, I am supposed to be dead. It is the spirit that is keeping me in this world. And this is not the way of things. Perhaps the spirit did not expect this, but it is weakening gradually. I am living on borrowed time. I didn't know if you were ready to hear it, but now you know. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. It seems a group of Logain's men were ambushed yesterday near Highover. I don't know who did it, but the men were hit while they were camping for the night. A whole lot of them taken by surprise. Their tents were set on fire with arrows, and I hear two dozen died. Nasty business. How did a child survive that? The crater is still smoking. It's a boy. Five fingers, five toes. That's all that matters to me. The Maker has answered our prayers. Let's go home, Marta, and raise the Tykazaro. Welcome back, Warden. As you can see, we've been busy. Clean the place up a bit. Even my brother Mikhail came out of hiding. Never will you find a finer smith. Also, got some goods stored here that might interest you. Buy them now before my cousins move it all someplace else. I thought about it, but I figured that it's not a bad thing to believe that you come from a line of lions. Even if the truth is a touch more complicated. Our family's belief that we were wronged. It gave us strength to make something of ourselves. King Arlen sounded like a right nasty piece of work. Sophia was branded a traitor. She consorted with blood mages. But in spite of it all, I think she was a hero. We've a big family. When you were away, we all pitched in. Hard to believe there were undead, demons, and worse around here, right? Certainly. You? You're the Warden? My family owes you. 
Any weapons I make, I will sell you for a discount. I have a family full of traders living a soft life, getting fat. I chose to learn the way of metal and stone. It keeps me strong. Indeed, I have spent my life studying steel, dragon bone, and more. I learned all I could in human lands, and exiled dwarves taught me more. Give me the finest metals and materials, and I can make wonders for you. This... this is star metal. If you give this to me, I will craft for you a thing of legend. And so it shall be. It is done. I call this blade Starfang. May it serve you well. I must rest after my exertions. Warden? There you are. Wanted to talk to you. You and I, we've... You know how sometimes you spend time with people and things? Hmm. I was thinking... Uh, I do know some people out here on the surface. A person, actually. A girl I knew in Orzammar. Before I left, obviously. <laughs> what? Oh, you mean, were we rutting? <laughs> oh, I... After Bronca left for the Deep Roads. Name's Felsey. She was a fiery one. I'm sure she's forgiven me by now. Thought maybe I'd track her down. See how she's been living. Me? Cheat? Ah! That iron-thighed shrew had left me long before. And she'd cheated on me with that tramp Hespeth. I grant you, I didn't find out about that till after, but... Hey, truth is truth. Anyway, she left for the surface a year back, and I haven't seen her since. What? Why are you asking me? I didn't do anything. Last I heard... She was gonna live with her mother on the surface, near some lake. <sighs> Clean, bad lake, was it? Yeah, I sawed it, I don't remember. Ah, you suspicious sack of pebbles. You always have to think the worst of someone. Ah, you whipped out the knife, didn't you? Look, Felsey and me, we didn't leave things on the best of terms. Yeah, she was jealous of Bronca. Then she got to be controlling, and Ogren was meant to be free, you know what I mean? Anyway, she couldn't handle everyone wishing they could be with me. So she left. Honest truth. I well, you go ahead. Wait, so we're going? Well, and a good friend you are, Warden. I'll think about you if we ever... Uh, no, actually, that would be gross. What can I get for you? And don't say mead. We ran out of that a week ago. And don't say rum, either. Ran out the day before yesterday. And don't say brandy. Oh, we haven't yet. It's just terrible. We got it from a shady Orlesian trader, and I think it might really be turpentine. Felsey! I need tables clean, girl! I've got a customer! Husband? You haven't been in town long, have you? You'd think this whole town was a chantry cloister for all the real men you find here. The dwarves in Denerim are as bad as the ones back in Orzammar. They're all alliances and rank and money, always worried about their reputations. You know how boring that is? I'd rather go drinking with a deep stalker than any of the men in Denerim. Felsey! The tables, girl! The ain't cleaning themselves! I told you! I've got a customer! <laughs> I'm from Orzammar. Darkspawn attacks are like spring breezes there. I'll stay as long as the tavern's open. And you admit it? You don't smell drunk. Get kicked in the head by a Bronto, did you? You could say that. You could also say I would rather kiss a deep stalker on the lips than see him again. What happened? Is that a serious question? Have you met Ogren? He got drunk. Drunker than usual, even took off his pants and challenged a roast nug to a wrestling match at my father's funeral. He lost, by the way. The roast got him in an arm lock. He sat there crying for half an hour before someone pulled it off him. It was a sodden good roast. Felsey, what in Andraste's name are you doing? The tables, girl! All right! 
I've got to get back to work. I got a moment. Hey, sure. You didn't take me? What? You scoping her for yourself? Safe? What kind of women do you think I... Yeah, well, I, Bronca, did try to trap us in the deep roads. I see your point. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. Rumbling stone, I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> Lead the way, Warden. The Ogren Love Caravan is on the move. I'm gonna go talk to her. Look, you gotta back me up here. Got it? What do you mean? I got something in my beard? My trousers are open? What? Ah, that fight was rigged. Anyway, the guard said it wasn't worth pressing charges. So she's no call to hold a grudge. Did she say anything else? I knew it. Once you've had Ogren, what merchant boy would do? Well, of course. They're merchants, maybe craftsmen. None of them compare to a real warrior. Just be ready to pry her off when she throws herself at me. We don't want to make a scene here. Well, don't pry her off me too soon. I mean, a little scene's all right. Are you sure you're not a baker? Because you got a sodding nice set of buns. Well, look what the nug dragged in. I should have known you were in the neighborhood, by the stench. What are you doing here? Uh, just trying to kick back with a pint. Fighting Darkspawn's a lot of sodding work, you know? You're fighting Darkspawn? It was a bit of pain, but it was a personal favor for the King of Orzammar, you understand? <laughs> the whole surface to choose from, and you just happened to come to my tavern? Eh, uh, well... Uh... What? Oh, right. It's fate, Felsi. What can I say? Fate? The ancestors must have a sense of humor, then. You just figure that out now? <laughs> You've seen what passes for dwarves up here. You don't think that's a joke? I'll give you that. I've been thinking about you, Felsi. What do you want, Ogren? Nothing. Just thought I'd see how you were doing is all. Well, maybe that and grease up the Bronto, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, you've seen me. You'll have to go back to Orzammar for the Bronto. If by fun you mean more likely to light farts on fire, yes. Oh well, it's been fun, Felsi. But I better go. Wait, you're leaving. You just got here. I haven't called you a shaft rat yet. Well, you can't keep the archdemon waiting. You hurt its feelings, it might just turn the whole blight around and go home. Nobody wants that. Well, you don't need to fight it right now, do you? I mean, you could have a pint first. You could call me a surly Bronto. <laughs> I could tell you that you smell like nug droppings. I'll tell you what, I got some things I gotta do, but I'll come back for that pint when things are settled, you frigid deep stalker. Fine, but you better not keep me waiting, you worthless copper-plated sword cast. Wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> I still got it. Weren't you watching? She could barely restrain herself. Might as well rest up while I can. You ready to go? What's on your mind? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams, because I knew they were there. I could sense the demons, too, and their presence frightened me. It was the kindly spirits of the Fade that took the fear from me. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the Circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. I suppose they must. It is these benevolent spirits that create our dream worlds in the Fade. Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting, but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me, and was guarding me, for want of a better word. 
There were times when I was in the Fade that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me, keeping me safe. And I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles, Ostagar being one of them. I don't know why I was chosen. Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance, and I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden and help prepare him for the task that is yet before him. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger-wagging. You know, I think you'll be all right, even without my help. I am listening. It doesn't have better things to do. Oh yes, that I remember quite well. My former master, the Mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum snarl at that villager there, be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> I'd have happily stomped them all into paste, and then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them, too. In fact, after thirty years of watching them, I'd do it twice. What I didn't like was being ordered to do it. Dangled in front of those frightened morons like some... Scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. The first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. Ugh. That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Pa. Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. Hmph! I was once larger, ten feet tall, than the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down! Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. With a chisel, and a lot of nerve. I traveled with the mage. He did a lot of traveling, I remember that. But where we went? It is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No, there are only images. I was somewhere dark. He did love using that control rod. Fondled it so much, his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. Ha! <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Good. Clearly, I am worth it. Good. I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? Ah, a fellow traveler of the Fair Lands. Are you a seeker, perchance? My packs are light, but I have a tome of strange origin. The Deus V. Eternus, rumored to be the last message to a sinful world from the Maker himself. Ah, will the wonders of this all too small a land never cease? Well, they will for you. Get them! What's on your mind? Cure me? What, am I sick now? Even you know that you cannot cure the dead. And I'm not the only one dying. You are too. <laughs> I'm just more efficient about it. Ah, child, your concern is heartwarming. But death comes to everyone, and it is not something to fear. People fear not death, but having life taken from them. Many waste the life given to them, occupying themselves with things that do not matter. When the end comes, they say they did not have time enough to spend with loved ones, to fulfill dreams, to go on adventures they only talked about. But why should you fear death? if you are happy with the life you have led. 
if you can look back on everything and say, yes, I am content, it is enough. Ah, human nature. You are right. Some people will never be content and will always want more. I think I've led a good life, a full life, and I, for one, am not afraid of death, whatever it may bring. They say that when you die, your spirit travels through the Fade and returns to the Maker. And after that, we'll see, won't we? Get your asses off Ben Talman's land. We want Ben Needle again. Logain is the regent. He demands your... We're not Orlesian Lickspittles. We owe no man our allegiance. Leave! Take their lands by force, men. Regent's orders. <laughs>